And now from Damayanti Chatterjee, who's uh, president of the Austin University Liberal Democrats. So I had a recent conversation with my tutor about how um, you improve the essays that you write. And what he said was, it might help if you actually consider the feedback you're given rather than insisting on plowing on the way you always <laughs> this two-year roller coaster, David Cameron visited his old college uh, last term. He came back to talk to a board of PPEs about the importance of listening to the most scathing bits of feedback. Um, it's ironic then that one of the most lucid, convincing arguments that I've ever heard for a second referendum, quite apart from the party political reasons for it as well, which we'll get on to, came from his most legendary and most scathing tutor, Vernon Bolden. Hmm. There's currently a deadlock in Parliament <coughs> where there will be no majority support for any conceivable deal. There is no move for a cross-party agreement between the two parties. There is no clear majority on any deal in the Tory party and the UP together that, that are currently governing this country. 196 Tories voted for May's deal versus 118 against and 10 DUP MPs. On top of that, the Labour Party itself is split with, with around 70 MPs who full on support of the people's vote. There are some letters as they call themselves, and the majority of them themselves are utterly ambivalent on what sort of deal they want. They only know that it's not a conservative one. On top of that, there are around 50 to 60 MPs from the other parties in Parliament who will back a people's vote to the hill. In a Parliament of this makeup, there is no way we can find one single deal that will command 50% plus one. We could look at a general election, but what that will result in is probably another incomplete verdict like the one we had in 2017. It's unclear how in any new deal led by any new leader would find any parliamentary majority that May's deal hasn't. It, where on earth would it come from? It certainly wouldn't specify what kind of Brexit we have a man mandate for, given the confusion of the two main parties. If you want to stay in the European Union, if you want Norway Plus, or if you want no deal, which party do you vote for, really? We've, a no confidence motion has been tried, it's failed. There is only one alternative left that anyone can support, and that is the people's vote. It's the only other politically acceptable source of a mandate. When there is no majority to be found in Parliament, and we need a mandate from somewhere, then it has to come from the voters. It delivers the democracy that we wanted in the 2016 vote. And to say that it betrays the vote of a lifetime that that vote was meant to be means nothing when all of the hopes of that referendum have already been squashed. So it makes sense for any party in Parliament, really, to support a second referendum. But from a Liberal Democrat perspective, it's easy to sometimes get tired of talking about what is essentially your flagship policy and has been for the last two years. We are the only party in Parliament with a clear and easy to understand Brexit policy, and that's what we've been shouting about since 2016. But when, we, when I come to talks like this, and I hear about the fact that the NHS is full of people from around Europe, who make work to make it the service that it is, when I look around this university and think of the people I wouldn't otherwise know, I realise that outside of a practical reason for supporting a second referendum, the Liberal Democrats must continue to be a voice for the poison value of optimism, internationalism, tolerance and multiculturalism, all those values that somehow we've forgotten along the way and yet we claim to represent. <laughs>